Hello everyone, in this video we're going to talk about homogeneous differential equations. So first we need a simple definition. So we say a function f, this is a pretty weird definition too, wait till you see this. We say a function f is homogeneous, so homogeneous of degree alpha. So of degree alpha, if whenever you look at f of tx, ty, what you can do is you can factor out t to the alpha. Now, alpha is a Greek letter here, and you get f of x, y. So a function f is homogeneous of degree alpha if this is the case. Now, for all practical purposes, when we're solving the differential equations, um, we can just look at the problems and we can tell uh, if they're homogeneous. But in order to illustrate that, let me just give you an example. Say we have f of x, y equal to x squared plus x, y. Let's show that this is homogeneous of degree 2. So we'll start by replacing um, x with tx and y with ty. So we end up with, let's see, so instead of x squared, it's the quantity tx squared plus, and instead of x, it's tx, and instead of y, it's ty. All right, let's keep going and see what happens. So it looks like we can use properties of exponents here. We get t squared, x squared, and in the second term, we can combine the t's, right? Multiplication is commutative, so this is going to be t whoops, whoops, plus. This is going to be t squared xy. And so now we can pull out a t. So this is t squared x squared plus xy. But this is the beautiful part. This is t squared. And then this piece here is simply f of x, y. So that's what we started with, right? So that's f of x, y. It's right there. So this is homogeneous and the degree is 2. So the degree is 2 and it's homogeneous. So generally it's pretty easy to tell if something is homogeneous. For example, this uh, would be homogeneous of degree 4, right? Because there's a 4 here. Uh, this would also be homogeneous of degree 4. You could basically add the exponents even though the variables are different. So 3 plus 1 is 4, 4, so we're good, right? So same thing here, look, 1 plus 1 is 2. Uh, this here would not be homogeneous, right? Because there's a 1 here and there's a 2 there. So a DE is homogeneous if each piece is homogeneous of the same, um, of the same degree, of the same degree. So let me explain that. So a DE of the form m dx plus n dy equals zero is homogeneous, so is homogeneous, okay, is homogeneous uh, if both m and n are homogeneous of the same degree. So both m and n are homos of the same degree. I'll just say are homos of the same of the same degree. Okay, so uh, it's going to be homogeneous, uh, uh, homogeneous DE if both M and M are homos of the same degree. Let me give you the steps required to solve a homogeneous DE, and then we'll do a simple uh, example. So, so to solve. To solve a homogeneous DE, you have um, two choices, right? You have two choices, two choices. So the first choice um, is you can let y equal ux, okay? Let y equal ux. When you do this, uh, you end up with dy equals u dx plus x du. That's, that's one choice. Two, 
Another choice is to let x equals vy. When you do this, you end up with dx equals v dy plus y dv. Okay, so you have two choices. I personally like to use the first choice, but uh, you use whichever choice is simpler. Uh, after you do this, uh, the result is linear. So the result is linear. You can use either choice, right? You can use both of these if you like, um, but you want to use the one that's easiest. Uh, what do I mean by that? Let, let me show you. Let's say we had um, say we had x plus y dx plus y dy equals 0. We won't solve this, but let's just talk about it. So in this case, um, if you use the second one, you would end up putting this here. And then you have to multiply that by x plus y. So you have to, do, you have to FOIL, right? Whereas if you use this one here, uh, all you have to do is distribute the y. So it's a little bit easier. So in this case, the first one is the easier choice. Let's do an example, an actual problem. Um, and then you can see, again, I'll explain why um, you, know, you pick which one. Again, you want to pick the one that looks simpler. So y is simpler, so you use the dy. If this was simpler, you would use the dx. All right, so I think I have a problem written down here. I haven't done it yet. Let's try it. So xy plus y squared uh, dx minus x squared dy equals 0. A, a word of caution on homogeneous DEs. Um, be careful, right? Um, these are probably the, the worst ones uh, that you learn uh, at the beginning of DE in a DE course because it's very easy to mess up. So in this case, this is simpler than this. So we're going to use the substitution that involves y. So we'll start by letting y equal to ux. And so dy, this is just the product rule, is u dx plus x du. Pretty easy there. All right, uh, so now we just have to make the substitution very, very carefully. So x is x, so we have x. Y is UX, so we get UX. Notice I didn't skip a step. Um, I wouldn't do it. <laughs> I would not recommend skipping steps here. And then Y is UX squared. And then DX is DX. Okay, and then minus X squared. And then DY is all of this. So we have UDX plus X DU. And that's equal to 0. So, so far, so good. Right? Let me just double check. We have x, ux, ux squared dx. Yep, looks good. Carefully distribute. So we have um, x squared u dx. Right? We're distributing this to this. Then we have plus um, u squared x squared dx. I always thought these were pretty tough. Uh, distribute here, you get minus x squared u dx. Then we have minus x cubed du equals 0. All right, let's see. Does anything cancel? Yes! Hurrah! This cancels. Does that always happen? No, no it does not. So there are some problems where stuff won't cancel. In this case, stuff canceled, so life is good. This is going to be... Oh, I, I typoed here. I'm so sorry. The result is separable. That's really bad. <laughs> so this is going to be a separable DE, okay? This is going to be a separable differential equation. So um, let's go ahead and uh, solve it. So we'll add this to the other side. So we get u squared x squared dx, and this is equal to x cubed du. Uh, let's see. We want to get all of the x's on one side by themselves. So divide by x cubed. That's going to give us 1 over x dx. And over here, it's going to give us 1 over u squared du. Right? Dividing by x cubed gives us x squared over x cubed, which is 1 over x. Dividing by u squared gives us that. Integrate both sides. We can rewrite this right-hand side as u to the negative 2 du. Okay? And now we can integrate both sides. Integrating the left-hand side, we get the natural log of the absolute value of x. And you're going to the right-hand side, we use the power rule. We simply add 1. So it's u to the negative 1 over negative 1. We add our constant. Let's clean this up. This is ln absolute value of x equals negative 1 over u 
plus c. Okay, so what's going on now? Well, we know that y is equal to ux. That means that u is equal to y over x. So 1 over u is just x over y. So this is going to be natural log absolute value of x equals minus uh, x over y. Right? We're flipping it. We're flipping this plus c. And that, my friends, is the final answer. I hope this video uh, has been helpful. That's it.